Welcome to today's tour of Paco, Costa Rica. I'll be giving you some information about the town. We're going to walk through Avenida Pastor Diaz, the main street of Paco that runs more or less north, north to south. Cojillo Cafe. We are now at the end of Bohio and still proceeding on Pastor Diaz, past a lot of the tourist shops. We're in high season and it's a Friday afternoon at around four o'clock. So a lot of people are pouring into town for the weekend. Passing by some of the more popular restaurants in town. Great gelato here. Express delivery. Beautiful almond trees downtown. Tico Pod Art House. Very nice for gifts, souvenirs, and pizza pata. It's a brutally hot day. So you can see that a lot of people aren't out on the streets as much. We are now approaching what I would consider to be Hako's main intersection downtown. This is Calle Lapa Verde that we're coming up to. And this is really the only street that runs from the highway into the downtown core. So Hako has no traffic lights. And this is the corner that sometimes can be problematic. So now we're right in the center of downtown and we're passing by Pops, Costa Rican ice cream store, very popular and usually the reference point in a lot of towns, the center of town. Dollar store. public house, a grill and bar that's very, very similar to what you'd see, I guess, if you're coming from North America. And another ice cream shop, El Barco. It's also been around for a long, long time and it's very popular. Both to my left and to my right are the craft stores. If you're ever looking for craft supplies, El Amigos and Yire. And now we're passing by the Banco Nacional, one of the first major banks in town. We're feeling lucky, we just passed by the lottery booth. If you're in general looking for a lot of things, Econo here is a department store that has quite a lot of the things you might need. And then we have a new store, Trustmart, which is kind of like a big convenience store and a drug, not quite a drug store, but that sort of idea. And then in a minute, we're coming up on Hako's main grocery store, Mas Por Menos, owned by Walmart. Thank 
new Indian restaurant that's just opened up. There are two Indian restaurants now in Hakko. Mas or or uh, Musi, sorry. Here, a little bakery. Another very popular activity in Hako are ATV tours. So this is one of the ATV tour places. And uh, French bakery. There are two. This kind of bakery in town. Quite a lot of bakeries in Hako. Hopefully you don't ever need to avail yourselves of the services of the Red Cross. But if you do, here it is, right next to Hako Walk. So we're coming up to the Hako Walk shopping complex. It's one of the newer places in Hako. I think it's been about six or seven years. It's very modern, has a lot of restaurants, bars, that sort of thing. Several e-bike places have opened up as well in the last few years. Nice progress. So here we are at the Hackle Walk Shopping Complex. Uh, we'll do a quick walk through. It's normally not incredibly busy at this time of day. So there's two sections really of Hako Walk. This open air section with uh, restaurants mainly, and coffee places and yoga places and that sort of thing. And then on the other side, we're not gonna go today, there's more shopping and offices and that sort of thing. But we're gonna roll through here and then we're gonna head back on the main street to see what's going on.
So we're leaving the Hacker Rock shopping complex. And really we're at the end of where most of the busier downtown parts are on Avenida Pastor Diaz, the main street. Uh, most things center around Pastor Diaz. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross the street and we're gonna head back through town to the very busiest parts of town. Very careful here. It goes a busy place. All right, so now we're back proceeding north on the Avenue de Pasco Diaz. Before they built Paco Walk, this area was fairly dead, actually. There was some, the stores here on the left tended to be more like electronic stores and kind of the stores you find at the end of downtown. But after they built Paco Walk, this area uh, became a little more lively, a lot more restaurants moved over here, and you definitely see a lot more traffic. As with a lot of places, an unfortunate impact of the pandemic. It's been a lot of businesses have closed, so we've seen a lot of turnover. Businesses leaving and new businesses coming in. But there are new businesses coming to fill the gaps. And as you can see, it's very vibrant. establishments in Hako. Bar. It's also a very popular local bar. So I think in the editing of this video, I may have to cut out a few sections where there's music that's playing in the background. So if you wonder, uh, I won't be talking all the time. Truly now we're entering the very busiest in terms of like how many people are on the street section. 
uh, the bus stop, the central kind of bus stop we just passed, liquor store, a very popular local bakery is coming up, Patchy's Pen. Uh, that's a popular nighttime spot, especially. Mariachi's going to work. And this is that odd hour in Hako where it's super busy, but everyone's going somewhere. There's not that many people in the restaurants or mariachis. Go with Patchy's pan. favorite trees downtown in Hako. So once again, craft store on the left here, U A. Office supplies and that sort of thing too. <laughs> to the left down this street would be the famous or infamous Cocal Casino, but we're not going in that direction today. Uh, and liquor store. Uh, an interesting point about the pandemic, uh, you couldn't drive in the evenings in Costa Rica and most businesses could not stay open, like especially bars, with the limitations. So uh, there are many, many, many more liquor stores in Hako since the pandemic that have opened. There used to only be a few and now they're all over town and very centrally located. Has the green room, one of the other popular restaurants. And now we are, there's a few discotheque type night party spots that we're passing. For those of you who are wondering, Hako does have its fair share of very nice stores. The Dolores shop here being one of them. And of course, tons of touristy stores. Get your Pura Vida t-shirt here. Lots of that going on. Passing the very historic Caliche's Wishbone restaurant. And this gentleman, who you'll definitely get to know if you're in town, sells toucan, toucan carved flute kind of things. You'll hear him in some of my videos playing in the background. So every single street that goes to my left, that goes west, uh, goes to the beach. And it's only one block to the beach. The entire downtown just hugs, hugs along the, 
the coastline. So we're not going to go to this beach. Uh, it's an option for us if we went down Bohio Street to their main kind of boardwalk and one of the more busy bound downtown beaches. But we are going to instead opt to see the rest of the busier downtown streets. But don't worry, we're going to make it to the beach. It's only a block away at all times. If you're interested in that sort of thing, we have a lot of videos on our station about various parts of Hako, beaches, parts of the beach, downtown, night videos, and we're going to keep increasing that. So. Let us know what interests you, if there's parts of town, or times you want us to go. surf shops I bet you nobody robs that store the two giant pit bulls up front. All right. I try to stay on the sidewalk, but. Sometimes it's better to avoid certain areas. But let's get back up here. Free Oasis, the oldest restaurant in Hako. And they say since 1993. Free Oasis has moved locations. So if you've lived here in the past, you probably remember it in, it used to be where the green room is currently, it used to be few other places in town. And now we're still proceeding north on Pastor Diaz. We're crossing the bridge here. There's a real difference once you cross the bridge. Um, it's still busy for a little while, but it's a little bit less dense than the other parts of town, the other part of downtown. My right is one of the local gyms. And there's some restaurant chains on this side of the of downtown as well. There's Subway, there's Pizza Hut, there's KFC, that sort of thing. Eventually, I'm going to cover even the other side of the street and other areas, but for today, we're just trying to get a, a tour of all the busiest areas. It's really quite busy.
So one of the questions I do get asked in Hako, uh, often on the channel here, is, is it safe in Hako? So this is a subjective question. Obviously, everyone has a different expectation of safety and stuff like that. But I, I take the question generally to mean, is it safe to walk around? Are you going to be robbed? Is there a threat of someone stealing your bag or something like that? Right. So I'm not going to deal with, you know, other forms of crime. Uh, probably higher than what most people obviously are used to in, in wherever homes they come if you're a tourist. But having said that, uh, in terms of my personal safety walking around, I feel that Hako is very, very safe. I've lived here a number of years. I've never had any issues at all. I frequently obviously walk around with camera gear uh, in the open at all hours of the day. Uh, it's a relatively busy and traveled place. Um, there's a lot of traffic and I think for a lot of people who aren't used to it, it can be overwhelming at first and look much sketchier than it actually is in terms of walking around, like I say. But even at night, it's relatively safe. Obviously, everyone should use common sense. Um, but, I mean, if you were to stay to well-traveled areas, everywhere I'm walking, I would feel relatively safe at any hour. So now we are getting a little more on the north side of town. I'm going to stop for a second and show you we are at the city's main park, uh, Johannes Dankers. We actually have some episodes walking through the park as well. We're not going to do that today. Very chill place. But we're going to continue a little further because actually the busier part of downtown is starting to peter out. There's a couple more blocks and then what we're going to do is go down to the beach because it's also one of the best parts of the beach in my personal opinion. So uh, how can you do a tour of Hako without showing the beach, right? Another common question I get is how busy is Hako? And so right now we're in high season uh, it's changed a lot obviously because of the pandemic so it's been inconsistent the last few years i would say uh, but we are in high season now and we have actually seen you know a lot of tourists come so this is pretty typical of the main parts of high season hako gets absolutely jam-packed with tourists at easter and christmas and new year's so keep that in consideration Another great cafe place. And regarding how busy Hako is, uh, another thing that you'll sort of see if you watch the videos is during the off season it'd be quite quiet, uh, especially on the beach. Uh, you might also notice that it's not a morning town. So uh, the videos where I'm filming in the morning, you'll see it's actually quite empty in town and on the beach. So even on the beach, outside of the most busy weekends that I mentioned, Easter, Christmas, uh, there's a lot of space. It's a big beach for the town. So, And here we are 
We are now approaching the end of the downtown core. There's a few more stores going down in this direction. Artisanal Bakery, Lutia Oro on my right, and Sabrosita is a very well-known and popular corner store. Let's go see the beach. This is one of the more beautiful parts of the beach down here. We are passing Isaga, which is a very typical restaurant and bar, very typical Costa Rican kind of thing that hasn't changed in a long time. So there's many of these uh, places and as a tourist, I would definitely recommend that you try. This is a legit deal. All right, and this is pretty representative of the distance to the beach from Pastor Diaz and the road. You see it's coming up. We're passing by Thai restaurant, Jarrah, one of the best places in my opinion. <laughs> So this is one of the better spots, in my opinion, to see the sunset on the beach. There's a couple beach clubs on either side, if you're into that sort of thing. There's parking. So I'm not sure how the wind will cut into the sound here. Hopefully, uh, I won't have to edit this audio later, but here we are. Getting late in the afternoon, but we're still not quite at sunset. And it's a Friday afternoon in high season, and I guess you can see what I mean by it's not hard to find empty beach in Hako. Typically, there'll be it'll be busier tomorrow on Saturday. It'll be busier on Saturday and Sunday for the sunset in particular, and in the afternoon. On a Friday like today, it can be variable. So, here's a big view of the beach.
So I think that about wraps it up for today. We're going to cut it out here at the beach. We hope you enjoyed today's guided tour of Hako. Please let me know what you think about it, what improvements you could make. Do I talk too much? Do I talk too little? Do you want different parts of the city covered or the town covered? Let me know. And thanks for joining us. Please subscribe and like our channel. And stay tuned for more updates of what's going on in Hako, Costa Rica.